A fight against corruption, one that has taken over the nation in unprecedented ways. As the Anna Hazare momentum grows with each passing hour, we continue to ask, why has Anna Hazare struck a chord with you? I think everybody is just too tired of uh, the complete inept uh, management of key issues in our country today. Whether it's corruption, whether it's terrorism, whether it's inflation, the government or even the opposition is seen uh, not to be really serious about people at all. I don't think their concerns are for the people of India. So um, the anger has increased and uh, Anna just stuck the right uh, note, I think, at the right time. And uh, I'm glad to see that in this movement there is a participation of a lot of young people and uh, also um, professionals uh, who normally don't get involved in the political processes of India. I think Anna has struck a chord because of two main reasons. One is the cause he's taken which is corruption, which applies to everybody and everybody has been sick of it uh, but hasn't really figured out a way what to do about it. A corruption that emanates from the government and which in fact forces all of us to be corrupt. And at one level we, we do become corrupt but it really bothers our humanity. So I think Anna's cause of trying to tackle corruption at the top is something which has connected with people. And the second thing is his method which is a very non-violent but yet very aggressive action-oriented method like he will not be violent he'll be very peaceful yet at the same time he wants a certain bill he wants a certain clause so it's not just open-ended ranting he actually wants to get something done so these two things i think have really worked in anna's favor i who have traveled got an opportunity to travel abroad and many others who travel abroad know for a fact that there's a world out there that functions very differently, far more efficiently and far more conscientious. Of course they have their issues, of course they have other issues, but I don't think any of their citizens have basic uh, amenities not provided for. Health, education, I think these are the two things, health, education and basic amenities, okay, like food, clothing and shelter. People do not have to work to get these things. It is given free of cost. So this is what I'm saying. They have other issues, but not the basic issues. We are struggling with the most basic issues. I think I, I see Anna Hazare as, uh, as a symbol of change. I see, uh, I, I can definitely see that he represents uh, hopes of millions of uh, the, the people in this country. I think through Hanna Hazare, a lot of people in this country have been able to channelize their bottled up sort of frustration, which was there for ages here. And they somehow, you know, feeling that something which they felt can never be addressed, something which they felt has become part of, completely part and parcel of their lives. And they will have to live with it for the rest of their lives, they've been able to see a ray of hope there. I do think that it's going to make a dramatic change because I think uh, the people in our politics have uh, been very blind to uh, the people's aspirations. And uh, now that they, they have seen the kind of following that uh, Anna has uh, got all over the country, uh, I think that they will have to take all this pretty seriously and uh, the fact that they have come down their high horse and uh, have decided to have Anna's bill uh, discussed in Parliament I think is a big step. Uh, I think that is the right process that should be followed. I don't think extra constitutionary powers are very, uh, it's not uh, a very comfortable thing to live with because cup panchayats are doing that thing, you know, and it can always be misused, like uh, our powers can be misused. But I think the right way to do it in a democracy is through the parliament and through constitutional authority. And uh, so if it's placed in front of uh, people in parliament, uh, I think uh, uh, we will see where the opposition stands also on Anna's bill.
Oh well, he's the quintessential common man. I think he is somebody who is, uh, you know, uh, who could be anybody. You know, who doesn't necessarily give a feeling that he's a very uh, elite or very rich or a super educated person. So almost anyone on the street, any farmer, can look at Anna and relate to him. At the same time, Anna has a very sharp mind. I mean, he, him, and his team, I would say, are extremely. Uh, incisive and precise about what they want to do they are very quick thinkers they they quickly change venues they quickly decide i want to go to jail and stay there things like that which also makes the elite and the intellectuals uh, at some level very proud of the way he does it because he can tackle the government and 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 does that so his his intelligence his uh, you know common man on the street look and his strategy which is very action oriented is something which people want to identify I feel somewhere if we could start with Anna Hazare and move on to other issues also soon it would really help and most importantly I'm here not to point a finger at any politician I'm here to say I want to start the change I want to make a difference I am going to try it's a hard journey because have we are habituated and we have become uh, we have become thick skinned to change so it's going to be really hard for us to change our our basic core attitude because we have lived with with this kind of you know lax attitude but we'll have to do somewhere a change I am surprised that whoever is advising uh, the government, the, the government of the country, uh, I think it is not a movement against the government of at all. I don't see it uh, like that. I see it as uh, a movement against corruption. And corruption, a lot of people are responsible for corruption. L uh, and I think uh, people are r uh, raising their voice against corruption. And I think somehow I feel uh, it has been uh, the way it has been dealt with. Um, it has the attention has moved to the government, government, and it is it feels that they have come in uh, become defense defensive about. It. And I think they shouldn't be defensive about it because it's not about them. It's not about the the current government at all. It is about the the frustration which which is in our society. <laughs> I wish that everybody, whoever is there, you know, whether it's opposition, different parties, media, government, people, they should all sit together and find a solution because it's a common enemy.